New reaction to that shocking murder that police say was prompted by boredom. Christopher Lane was living out his dream in Oklahoma as a student athlete. The Australian native was in our country on a baseball scholarship at East Central University in Oklahoma. But killers shot him in the back while he was out on a jog. And police say, according to them, these three teenagers took his life. Two are charged with murder, a third as being an accessory. Their ages just 15, 16, and 17. They will all be tried. They've been charged as adults. But the apparent randomness of the crime has left more questions than answers. Let's talk about it with attorneys Deborah Blum and Andal Brown. Welcome to you both. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Deborah, I'll start with you. The 15 and 16 year olds are the ones who are now charged with first degree murder as adults. What does that mean? How is it different than if they had been charged as juveniles? Well, what that means is they could face the death penalty, but in this case, because they are under the age of 18, they will not face the death penalty. The Supreme Court ruled in 2005 that those age 18 and under cannot face the death penalty if they are 18 and under. So if they were tried as youthful offenders, this would not come up on their records, even if they were convicted. So this just means that they're facing the charge as adults and they're subject to life imprisonment without parole. And and uh, what we're hearing right now is, is strictly what we're hearing from the police. Their report that what they say the boys told them is that they were bored. They had nothing to do. This guy jogged by and they targeted him. Uh, I would imagine once they lawyer up, uh, you know, we're not going to hear that story directly from them. Uh, what does that do to this case moving forward and the potential jurors who are out there listening and, and you know, what police are saying publicly so far? Well, I think one thing we have to always keep in mind is that we're in the early stages of this case, and we don't know as much information as we will going forward. What that has to do with particularly is what they've been charged with. They've been charged with first-degree murder, and when you're charged with first-degree murder, there's an element of premeditation. Did they plan this out? They say that they were bored, and we don't really know whether that's what uh, is going on or that's the motive. Because, as we know, when we're dealing with young people, many times when they don't have an answer, I don't know. I was bored. I, I, I did it for a reason other than what the real reason was. So in this case, we have to find what the real motive is, and that truth will be revealed as the investigation continues. And that will take some time. Uh, Deborah. once they do start to move forward and closer to trial, as you said, because they're under 18 in Oklahoma, they could not face the death penalty uh, and pursuant to that Supreme Court uh, precedent that you noted as well. But if they stay true to these statements that they've made so far, they don't disavow them or accuse the police of lying. I mean, that basically they said they were bored, targeted this guy, they had nothing else to do, and they did it for fun. What does that do for them in the place of trying to bargain if they don't, plea bargain if they don't want to go to a jury? Um, where does that leave them? Well, in any criminal case, the defendants have the right to enter a plea of guilty without going to trial. And usually when you do so, you're doing so in exchange for a more favorable disposi disposition in the case. Uh, I think here it's clear that this was premeditated murder and they're going to have very little luck getting a plea deal in this case. They targeted an innocent human being who was just jogging and shot him dead. And based on the facts as we know them at this time, they absolutely committed an act of premeditated murder. So for them, based on what we know at this time, it's unlikely that entering a plea of guilty before going to trial is going to have a lot of benefit to their defense. And also, people have mentioned the possibility of a mental illness being at play here. It does not appear that these three teenage boys had mental illness, and the two that are char charged with murder are going to have a very hard time getting away with anything less than life in prison. Antel, there are reports that one of the alleged killers, one of the young men who's charged with murder, uh, investigators say that he had a message on his Facebook page that said, bang, two drops in two hours. Um, how much does social media come into evidence? How much would it play in a case like this? Well, I, I think in a case like this, as uh, Deborah mentioned, uh, their intention is definitely a question. And here we have, before the alleged crime occurs, someone stating that we intend to do something that sounds a lot like what they actually did. So that, I think it would absolutely come in. It's, it's admissible because it shows the state of mind of the defendant. 
Well, and Deborah, how at this point would it work if you have the three, the two charged with murder, the one as an accessory? Uh, how does it work with police, with investigators reaching out to each of them individually and saying, if you tell us what happened, maybe, you know, prosecutors go more lightly on you. Uh, how much is that that is a part of trying to get to the, the truth of what happened and, and trying to put together their case? Well, it depends on how the prosecutor wants to handle this case. They could act, ask one of the defendants or all of the defendants to cooperate with their investigation and getting to the bottom of what happened. Usually when a defendant is asked to cooperate with the prosecution, if they successfully cooperate, they will be entitled to a benefit for their cooperation. So the prosecutor might lessen their charge. It's ultimately up to the prosecutor and there are benefits to cooperating and there are also disadvantages to cooperating. Here, right. it's unclear if they will actually need the cooperation. And also, it's unclear who is responsible for the shooting because the third person who's not charged with the actual murder stated in court and shouted out in court that he was the one that did it. So I think that the, the investigators yeah. and the prosecution will be able to and, piece this together. Yeah. And the judge told him to stop talking at that point. Deborah and Del, thank you both very much. Thank you.